Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, doing a new movie review on this Mother's Day weekend, and I decided to choose the perfect movie for Mother's Day, and that is, what else but Serial Mom. Now, this is not the new Blu-ray that just came out this week from Shelf Factory. This is actually the DVD that I own that came out in 2008 by Universal and Focus Features, which Universal and Focus Features have bought the rights from Savoy Pictures, which happens to release this movie from HBO. And before the Shell Factory release came out, this was the perfect gift for us to get because this was digitally remastered, it was a widescreen, and it had tons of features right here. So apparently in the new release you're going to get the same features except with the TV spots that was in the HBO home video release that was in full frame and it's going to feature a new 34 minute uh, documentary which includes John Waters, Kathleen Turner and Mink Stoll. And I would definitely would love to pick that out um, sooner or later because unfortunately when I try to find some Shell Factory titles, same goes with Screen Factory, they're often very hard to find at stores like Best Buy, Walmart, and Target. But that depends on which location carries it. I mean, Fry's Electronics will carry it, and so is uh, Barnes & Noble. You can even get it online if you have to. Um, but chances are, be aware of the prices. But maybe when I get more money, um, I'll pick it up. But I picked this up at Amazon.com back in 2011 for a cheap price. It was around uh, five bucks when I got it. It was definitely worth it, and mostly because it was the first time we ever got to see the film in widescreen the way it was meant to be since uh, we were stuck with the full frame version on the DVD that's out of print. So Universal was very lucky to provide that. Unfortunately the, the new Blu-ray, also the one that's overseas uh, including Germany and, and UK, they will carry a different master of the film which actually looks a significant upgrade to this release. Because as far as I know, this release was taken from a 35 millimeter transfer that has some wobbles and and grain and all that, which which is okay, but it does have some issues. But otherwise, uh, it's still a good transfer. It wasn't cropped. It it, it was matted perfectly for its time. Because I noticed that the uh, the HD master from from a German Blu-ray release. Uh, was cropped so chances are it's going to be included on the shelf factory release or screen factory as I like to be referred to because that's part of their label anyway <laughs> and yeah they use this cover art which is basically photoshopped where they just put uh, Kathleen Turner's head and they just use uh, the dress that was in the movie where where we basically see um, Beverly just chasing after uh, Chip's friend uh, Scotty yeah, with that dress on and she was taking the knife. Yeah, it seemed like that's the, <laughs> this is a perfect way to actually create this this Photoshop uh, cover art. You know, just to make it look more kitschy in a way. And 50 style uh, look of it. But yeah, the movie is basically about a housewife um, it was very nice and caring, like she came from the 50s, like from a TV show like Donna Reed and and uh, <laughs> Leave with the Beaver with Beverly Cleaver. Uh, so, there you go. <laughs> but deep down of it, she has a dark secret that she might turn out to be a serial killer in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah. Now, uh, when John Waters did this movie, he was just doing two films already, 
that were PG rated, and that was uh, Hairspray and Crybaby. Uh, Crybaby. Yeah, the one with Johnny Depp. And as far as I'm concerned, Hairspray was the most popular film of them all. Even though he was best known for doing all these dark and edgy comedies, yeah, because he's considered to be the king of trash himself. He's been best known for doing films like uh, Plink for Mingos, Female Trouble, and Polyester. Yeah, which he had his 300-pound uh, uh, transvestite named Divine. And he's no longer with us, of course, seeing that his last movie was Hairspray. So... After all this time, he decided to do this movie with a um, a bigger budget, $13 million. Yeah, that was as big as it could be. With a um, all-star cast, Kathleen Turner being one of them. And also has uh, Ricky Lake from Hairspray. Has uh, Sam Waterston and uh, Matthew Lillard, who went on to do uh, films like Scooby-Doo and and uh, <laughs> subwaters yeah and you can see the cast right here <laughs> as you know it yeah with all the features well anyway I also own the soundtrack that I just bought at the thrift store back in 2009 only a buck 99 but it was definitely worth it as all the songs Yeah, and plus the score was done by Basil Polidorus, who's been best known for doing the score for The Terminator, and also work on Robocop, and and even the film Cherry 2000. So, this is a perfect score for him. And you can see what it looks like, <laughs> right here, the CD. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get this out. So I could show you what it looks like. You can see the cover. Serial mom and scissors. Yeah, there's John Waters, the director, with Kathleen Turner. It even tells you the description of all the songs that are included. Some pictures of <laughs> Kathleen Turner yeah, with the knife and that dress that I just showed you, just going after Scotty. It was played by uh, Justin Raylan, by the way. They also featured uh, L7, a girl band known as the Camel Lips in the movie. And it also has uh, Patricia Hearst, or Patty Hearst. Yeah, which. There was a scene in the movie where she did actually kill her with the receiver. There you go. <laughs> That's cool. Love that. Now, I just put away the CD and, and the DVD already. So, I had to do a quick edit on that. Hey, I do a lot of editing on my videos anyway. Nothing wrong with that, okay? But let's just get to it. Now, when I first saw Serial Mom, it was back in December of 1994. My dad rented this at Blockbuster Video. I really miss Blockbuster already just saying it. Yeah, but back then, we had VHS tapes. I mean, DVDs weren't even around yet. Uh, I know Laserdisc was. Anyway, Dad rented this movie on VHS. I saw it for the first time because, well, this was a John Waters film. He was best known for directing Hairspray and Crybaby, but he was also known for directing other films from the past. So this was going back to his uh, trashy ways when he did this. When I first saw this movie, 
I hated it because I got a bit traumatized. A lot of foul language was in the movie, of course. They made the character look uh, as evil as, as it could be instead of being as caring and loving as I wanted this character to be. But I, I know, I mean, th that's just the whole point of the film. But the one scene that traumatized me the most was having to see Beverly Suffin uh, went inside the men's restroom at a local swap meet and stabs uh, Misty's ex-boyfriend Carl Pageant in the back with a fireplace poker. And when and when she stabs him, it reveals a huge chunk of liver that's coming right out of his back. And that was disgusting. It, it, it was so disturbing. It grossed me out. And it just feels so... Ugh. And it's hard to believe, but my dad suddenly got crazy that he started to make a copy of, of the same tape that he rented it from Blockbuster and started watching this movie over and over and over again you know, with the family including my uncle and everybody else and they really got into this movie so much that I was going to turn away and he had to borrow my VCR just to make a copy of it which I was pissed too because I never get a chance to use my VCR to record all my VHS tapes. Yeah. So I gave the movie a second chance. And it turns out that it's not as bad as I thought. In fact, it got me howling with laughter, mostly because of that one scene, and one scene alone made me want to love this movie even more and of course the character was when um, Beverly Suffin decided to make an obscene phone call with the next door neighbor Dottie Hinkle yeah and this is where this is where it all happened where she says is this the cocksucker residence? is this 4215 pussy way? now let me check out the zip code Two, one, two, fuck you! And it just goes on and on and on, and I just can't help but laugh. I know they put this clip on YouTube, which is a good thing, too, because now people remember this movie and remembers this scene a lot. That I just can't help but love the film. And the movie just got better and better over the years. It became a cult following, and I'm glad it did. And I started to love this movie now. Even as a 30-year-old uh, man like me, well, I'm 32 now, and I'm just happy that that I now own the DVD and the soundtrack. And later on, I will pick up the Screen Factory Blu-ray because I would love to see the new 34-minute documentary with John Waters, Kathleen Turner, and Ming Stoll. Because sad to say... Kevin Turner never had an interview on the DVD release, only in the commentary. So anyway, um, let's get to the review. So it's Kathleen Turner, been best known for films like Romancing the Stone, along with its sequel, The Drill of the Nile, with Michael Douglas and Danny DeVito, along with The War of the Roses, the dark comedy that Danny DeVito wrote and direct, also with Douglas. She also went on to do the voice of Jessica Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's right, because she does have that sexy, husky voice of hers. She was even in movies like uh, Body Heat with William Hurts and Crimes of Passion with, uh, with um, Anthony Perkins from Psycho. Yeah, he's in that. And many others. Sam Waterston from Law and & Order and Warning Sign. Ricky Lake from Hairspray. Matthew Lillard who's been in other films including the, that awful Scooby-Doo movie 
Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Scott Wesley Morgan, Patricia Dunnock, Walt McPherson, Mink Stowe, Mary Jo Catlett. For those who don't know, she went on to do the voice of Mrs. Puff in SpongeBob SquarePants. Hard to believe that was her. Justin Braylon, been known for playing an older version of Andy Barclay, the teenage version of him, and Charles Play Free. He later went on to do that awful film Dungeons and Dragons from 2000. Can't believe he went from that to, to this. Bo James, Patty Hearst, or Patricia Hearst, Tracy Lords. Yeah, she's been best known for doing all these uh, porno films at a young age. But she's been best known for being in the film Cry Baby. And Suzanne Summers from Freeze Company and Step by Step. And it's co-produced, written, and directed by John Waters. The movie begins set in a beautiful suburban house in Baltimore, Maryland. We meet a wonderful, loving, and caring housewife named Beverly Suffin, who's played by Kathleen Turner. She lives with her husband, who's a dentist named Eugene, played by Sam Waterston, along with her two teenage kids, Misty and Chip, both played by Ricky Lake and Matthew Lillard. But she holds a dark secret of her own, as we suspected, she's a serial killer. Dub Serial Mom. By the media press, as it reveals. So anyway, during breakfast, detectives Pike and Gracie had arrived to question the family about an obscene phone caller who's been tormenting their next-door neighbor, Dottie Hinkle, who's played by Mink Stowe, sending all these threatening messages to her completely. So as the cops and the family had left, it turns out that Beverly Suffin is the obscene phone caller by disguising her voice to pull a plank on Dottie, mostly because of her revenge after Dottie had stole her parking space at a local mini mall. Yeah, which her best friend Rosemary had suspected it because after all they were about to plan on selling some more stuff at um, at the swap meets uh, in Maryland. Yeah, along with the uh, the Pee Wee uh, Herman doll that Misty wants to sell for a lot more. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, later that day, Beverly had went to Townsend High School in Townsend, Maryland to, to have a chat with a meeting with Chip's math teacher, Mr. Stubbins, about uh, Chip's personal life and discovered that he's overly obsessed with gory horror films because after all he works at a video store he's a manager he has a best friend who also works there named Bertie who's played by Patricia Dunnock and he also hangs out with his other friend who's sexually obsessed with porno flicks named Scotty who's played by Justin Whalen and he doesn't wear his seatbelts too while driving around with Chip and Bertie. Yeah, go figure. Well, Mr. Stubbins had found out that there might have been something wrong with the family and, and the fact that he's starting, starting to suspect that Chip might have been completely insane. Like he might be a killer or something. You know, going around tormenting animals and all this other violent acts but it turns out that he's just a normal boy I mean that's what Beverly suspects and, bec and the fact that Mr. Stubbins had told her that Chip definitely needs to seek therapy for that that's when Beverly had lost her nerve and decided to take matters of her own hands by running over Mr. Stubbins with her station wagon and she ran over him really good too just after he was about to leave and, you know, he just grabbed some chewing gum and he was holding uh, a, tin, uh, a tin can of a fruit cake that uh, Betty had sent him. I mean, Jesus Christ, it was just so messed up. 
I mean, he ran over him completely. And the pothead girl, Luann Hodge, has sold the whole thing. She was the witness to the murder. So everybody really suspected it right there. But it gets even worse because the next day, Misty had found out that she's being stewed up by Carl Pageant because it turns out that his ex-boyfriend had just went with another girl. A hot girl who was played by Tracy Lords. So suddenly Beverly had spotted him along with the hot girl at the local swap meet just when when Rosemary was about to buy a fireplace poker you know, changing the tags just after she just found out that she can't afford uh, that one egg that's been destroyed by Beverly and you know, blaming it on Dottie for that that Beverly decided to take the poker inside the men's restroom and stabs Carl all the way straight into his back and that's when it reveals that huge chunk of liver that came out of it that was really disgusting that it just turned me off when I saw that so meanwhile Eugene had discovered a lot of serial killer memorabilia that's been hidden around the bedroom just after the detectives had found out the two serial killer books inside the trash and that's when he found an audio cassette which has the voice of Ted Bundy the serial killer who's actually voiced by none other than John Waters himself hard to believe <laughs> but that was really clever of him to do that it just really works then uh, during dinner Chip had started to comment about who the killer was and they basically suspected that she might be as we as we know it their mother so she left you know just to go get some foods like strawberries and all that so the family had left just to find out along with the cops that she might go over there and attack Scotty but it turns out that she's about to attack a couple who uh, Turns out to be a dentist patient, which is the, the Sterners. Yeah, Ralph Sterner and his wife, Betty. It, what happened was, though, was that uh, Ralph Sterner decided to go to his office due to the fact that he has a chronic toothache. And because of that, on that particular Saturday, he was supposed to go bird watching with his wife, um, Beverly. He had to spend more time... You know, drilling his teeth on the on the side right there. So, so of course, decided to eat sweets and some chicken, and you know, for dinner. And while he, they were gonna watch uh, World of Fortune, yeah, and that's where we started seeing all these flashbacks that she had. Because after all, they were responsible for this. And she goes around taking Rosemary's scissors and stabs Betty in the stomach. And actually brought in a rat that's hidden inside the shoe box and bitten her foot. And she dies. And then she decided to go after Ralph. I mean, first she was about to go stab him with the... and attack him with the... <laughs> with the scissors. And the scissors actually sticks into the wall before she actually kills him by dropping an air conditioner on him. So that Sunday, they're about to go to church, filled with police cars following them, as they suspected, because now the whole media have found out that she's serial mom. So she decided to hide out uh, with Chip and Bertie to go to their video store just as Mrs. Jensen had came over to return the movie Ghost Dad yeah the Bill Cosby film as we know it <laughs> just so she can go rent the movie Annie from 1982 yeah the one with Eileen Quinn I have that film on Blu-ray by the way and actually calls Chip son of a psycho because of the rules that she had to do by rewinding the videotape which he didn't because it actually charged 
four dollars if you don't rewind the VHS tape see at least we don't have that problem anymore now do we <laughs> yeah but the late fees was a joke but there you go I still miss video stores though so anyway she went back to her house she was about to watch the movie Annie with her dog while having some lamb so Beverly suddenly went inside her house and actually kills her with a leg of lamb yeah that's right while she was singing the song from the movie Annie because <laughs> they were showing the opening credits and she's like this is like bludging her completely to death. All the blood started to spurt out onto the TV set. All the way through the screen and completely. And then she was about to go after Scotty by taking out the knife. Just ran as fast as she could. Then she, then she started chasing him around with his car. And... Uh, she actually, uh, she just hijacked another uh, car, which is a, uh, uh, which is a van, and they went into uh, a concert, which is called the Hammerjacks, which we revealed an all-girl band named Campbell Lips, which is by um, L7. Yeah, it was a girl band that that started out in in 1985, and they lasted until. 2001 but they reunited in in 2014 it was basically a a, uh, a riot girl band that they had yeah that kind of resembles to all the other bands that we got later on so interesting and boy when you saw that scene that's where uh, one of the girls actually had taken out their guitar and actually stabbed uh, Scotty completely just before uh, Beverly decided to take, uh, the, first she cut out the uh, the light uh, the light fixture and it went all the way down at him, and then after that he took an aerosol and light him up on fire, and and one of the girls just uh, took out uh, took out an alcohol and just and just spray. Uh, and just spray Scotty all the way until he was burned to death and then the family had arrived and and then after that the detectives came in and and arrested her and that's what leads to uh, a courtroom scene which all the victims and the juror and everybody else including juror number eight who's played by Patty Hearst who's wearing white shoes after Labor Day yeah yeah she just got arrested for a couple months and it happened in October which kind of resembles to what happened that same year in 1994 with the OJ Simpson trial that happened just not too long after this movie came out so that's like completely ironic I mean that's what John Rogers found out about this and there basically um, talking about what happened all of this so on and so forth until the final end which I know uh, Susan Summers uh, came by because they were going to do a, a television film about Beverly Suffin and they were also selling a lot of memorabilia and all this other stuff outside uh, for Serial Mom because uh, <laughs> Misty was also falling in love with a photographer and all this had remains and well <laughs> I'm gonna stop right there I mean but nevertheless I mean th this was a fun movie I loved it um, I thought Kathleen Turner did a great job she was very funny in the film insanely funny it really shows I mean she could definitely do dark comedies like this kinda like when she did uh, the War of the Roses. I wish she had continued to do that uh, at the time, but nevertheless, uh, I thought she did a she did a fine good job playing the serial mom, <laughs> Beverly Suffin. And I also love the cast too. Even the 
Sam Waterston as uh, her husband. Uh, he did a great job too. I mean, he was good playing the dentist and trying to find out uh, her secrets. But nevertheless, uh, he really loves his wife. He also loves his kids. Yeah, both played by yeah Ricky Lake and Matthew Lillard playing Misty and Chip. Rick Lake was also good in this movie too. Yeah, coming from Hairspray and, and the fact that she was also doing her talk show at the time. She has never been this beautiful. And and it shows. I mean she was very she was really cute. And I swear to God, I mean why why would you stood up for a hot girl like Tracy Lords? I mean come on, really. Well, I, I guess they have to go for that these days. And I thought Matthew Lillard was hilarious, too, as Chip. And it really shows because he's a very talented actor, too, and he's very funny. And, of course, Justin Whalen as Scotty. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, he was, like, overly obsessed with porno flicks that he just goes around masturbating. Yeah. Because he actually did masturbate with a uh, a porno flick, which, yeah, they all came by because they thought he was going to get killed. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um, but um, also has a great soundtrack. Um, they had the song Gas Chamber by L7. It was a very cool song coming from them. Uh, I love the score that was done by Basil Paul Sidoris. I mean, he did a great job. Um, I, I love the score that happened at the opening of the movie, which looked really amazing. It, it just sounds just right. It feels like like it has that 50s style uh, score right there. And um, also, um, in, in the CD soundtrack that I have, which I just show you, they also started putting some clips uh, at the beginning of the track. I thought that was pretty clever that they did that because I never thought you would do that for a soundtrack, but it works. Uh, yeah, I mean this movie just became such a cult following and I'm glad to see the film is getting much praise now than it did when it first came out. And it's just, <laughs> there's just a lot of funny scenes in this movie and I just loved it too. I, I always loved the scenes where, even at the courtroom scene where, where um, once again Dottie Hinkle is <laughs> is um, already suspected to find out who who the obscene phone caller was, and then they they started to <laughs> bicker each other too <laughs> until she got arrested. That was just hilarious and and. Um, Susan Summers uh, had a cameo in the film, and I thought she did a great job too. I mean, it just shows that, you know, she really wanted to uh, play the role, even though she thought that she was innocent. And and I I love that scene at the end of the movie where they're about to get a picture of both of them because they're about to do the movie that they're planning on. Just when she's already uh, set free, you know, pleaded not guilty. <laughs> This is where she says, Susan Summers, this is my bad side. But I have to admit, the violence in the film was very tame. And uh, they're not as brutal as I thought they would. I mean, even though they are. But not too much, because they were doing it for comical reasons. After all, it is a comedy. And it worked. And uh, I thought John Waters did a great job. Um, doing a uh, a dark comedy like this just after he did the two films that he had and it shows but anyway um i love this movie and i'm glad i did it it it's worth watching more than once you'll never get tired of it so that's serial mom and i give that movie four stars i'm joseph a. sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.